Blessings this morning to the people of God. Today we continue our stewardship journey of extravagant generosity, looking at the heart of giving. Last week you were invited to share what you love about this church through your heart cards that look like this. If you didn't get a chance to fill one of these out, we have some extras. You can fill that out. Some of what people wrote, I wrote, I had Samantha write down from the wall in there. Some of the things that people love about this church. The people. The music. My church family. Every one of you. Loving and supportive community. Open doors, open arms, open hearts. It's a place that makes you feel safe. The caring, friendly people. We sing really good songs. <laughs> Those are just a few. There are more up there, and I did put them up on the board, so you're welcome to read them whenever. And if you'd like to write another one, as I said, we have extras. So thank you to those who shared what they love about this church. I pray that you continue to reflect on the things that you love about this church. Continue to share what you love about this church with others. God is at work in this church. God is at work in the people of this church. In your bulletins this morning, you'll find the next heart card. This week's heart card, which says, People who made a difference in my spiritual life. This week we'll focus on celebrating those who have impacted your spiritual life, both past and present. Those who have made a positive influence on your walk with Christ. Those who have impacted your journey to get closer to God. From the great Shema of, or prayer of the Torah in Deuteronomy to the teachings of Jesus that we find in John 13, this focus on loving relationships is there and throughout the Bible. Today and in the week ahead and in the weeks to come, I look forward to hearing more about what you love, what is extravagantly generous about this church, what brings you back every Sunday? This church is a special place. Please pray with me. God of extravagant generosity, love, and grace, draw us closer to you. We come together as a people who are fully loved by you and who strive to fully love you with all of our hearts, minds, and souls. Help us to feel your love fully, and to share your love fully with everyone we meet. Let us put our faith and trust in our relationship with you and with the people of God. Help us to love one another as you have loved each of us. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning, as we continue our journey toward what extravagant generosity means to us individually and collectively, first let's take some time to think about those who have been generous to us, who have helped shape us into the people that we are today. As I think back to my childhood, I'm reminded of an amazing Sunday school teacher named Ruth. Ruth greeted us each week with a smile and a how are you doing? You knew that when you walked into that Sunday school room, you were going to be loved and accepted just the way you were, but also encouraged to learn, to grow, to be better. She taught us a great deal about the Bible, but I think even more importantly than what she taught us about the Bible, she taught us how to be Christians. She taught us how to love one another. She taught us the value that was in love for us. From God. Then as a teenager, I was blessed to have several pretty amazing youth sponsors. One in particular, his name was Bill. He helped me understand the value of joy. We listened to a lot of crazy old stories on the radio in the car when we'd go on trips. Humor was important to him, and he saw it as a vital part of our faith journey. To him, it was just as important for us to enjoy our faith journey as it was to grow in our knowledge of Christ and of Christianity. He encouraged us to find people of faith who, were, who we enjoyed spending time with. I'm so thankful for that, because it's more important to find people you enjoy to spend time with 
that share your same values. And that was a skill that he taught us, that he entrusted in us. And then as a young adult, I attended college at the University of Wyoming. And I had the privilege to get to know an older couple in the church who served as the Wesley Foundation coordinators. Marion and Merritt had hearts of gold, were passionate about providing opportunities for college students to gather and grow in faith. They provided a weekly meal, which as a college student is gold, and a safe place for us to wrestle with our faith. They organized mission opportunities there in Laramie, and also mission trips that we took down to Arizona and even into Juarez, Mexico. Unlike many college students who may have drifted away from the church, for me, they kept me grounded. They kept me connected to a church that maybe there weren't a lot of people that looked like me, but there were a lot of people who cared about my future. A lot of people who cared about the future of the church. And these are just a few examples of the people in my life who've helped me to become the person that I am. As I reflect on this congregation, I'm humbled and inspired by many people who step up, lead, and care for each other and for our community. Each person in this room is making a difference in the lives of somebody else, in the spiritual journey of other people. I'm going to offer some general examples, maybe not specific, because each of us have our own gifts that we're giving. First off, there are those who volunteer their time, energy, and resources to leaf and to the food pantry. They help to provide food and basic needs to the people in the Lions community. It's done through shopping for the pantry, greeting folks who walk through the doors each week, donating those most needed items, attending fundraisers and events, and simply just promoting what Leaf and the Food Pantry does for this community. There are others who give of their time, energy, and resources to help the young people in our church and throughout our community. It's done through many different avenues. As a means of outreach and welcome, our model building club has served as a way to welcome young people into a safe place with caring adults present for them. As a volunteer for Vacation Bible School, young people are welcomed and loved just as they are. Whether this is their first time in this church or any church, or their 1,000th time in a church, it doesn't matter. They're welcomed. This, there's passion in these teachers who volunteer. The passion of each of these adult volunteers as they set out to teach and care for these young people is done through songs, prayers, games, activities, and the most valuable part, I think, sometimes to the kids, the creative snacks. <laughs> There's love that is put into each part of VBS. This same passion and care comes from our volunteers on Sunday morning who take the kids down for Children's Church. Children, mine included, are always excited to go downstairs to learn to share stories, sometimes even to sing songs and play music. It's a safe place for young people to grow in their faith, to discuss what it means to truly be a follower of Christ. Then there are the countless number of people who volunteer their time, energy, and resources to help lead us in worship. There are those who stand up here and guide our words to make us sound better than maybe we would otherwise. There are those who share their musical talents through a number of different instruments. Too many to list. This is done weekly and on special music Sundays as well. Music is and always has been an important part of my own spiritual well-being as I imagine might be true for many of you here today. I truly appreciate all that goes into sharing the love of God through the gift of music. And these are just a few examples of what I have observed about people in this congregation, in this church sharing the love of God with others, playing a role in the spiritual journeys of each other. What an inspiration it is to me to see the body of Christ in action through each person in this room. 
I imagine that each of you can think of someone, either in this building, in this church, or in your faith journey past, that has made a difference in who you are, made a difference in your walk with Christ. Both our Old Testament and our New Testament readings are centered around loving God with our whole beings, with all that we are. A reading from Deuteronomy opens up with what is known as a Shuma, the core confession of faith in the Jewish tradition. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. The Shuma is at the heart of Jewish faith, and it's as familiar to the Jewish people as the Lord's Prayer is to us as Christians. The opening lines are followed by the imperative to love. The exact words call for us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. In good times and in the not-so-good times. When people are gathered together and in those times when we are all alone. God is there. God's love is there. These words call for believers to always, everywhere, in every situation, love the Lord of God with all that we have. Loving God is clear in this. And then, just to make sure we know that loving God is important all the time, we're reminded to keep these words in our heart, to recite them to our children, to talk about them when we're at home, when we're away, when we lie down and when we rise up, to bind them on our hand, to fix them in an emblem on our forehead, write them on the doorpost of our house and on our gates. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go get a tattoo, unless you feel called to do so. But to put it simply, it just means that we are to imply that God's love is so important, that we are to share that everywhere to go, that people will know by how we act, by how we speak, by what we do, that we believe, that we love God and that we love others. I would venture to say that one of the most distinguishing characteristics of Christianity is love, or at least that is what I hope it would be. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus charges us to love one another, a new commandment to love one another. It's a charge for us to share the love that we receive from God, to share that love that we hear about in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Bible, to share that love with everybody that we meet, to love the Lord our God and to love God's people. This type of love is often called agape love. Agape love means praying and working for the good of all people, regardless of who, what, when, where, without any question about this person the other people. Agape love is based on unconditional love that each of us receive and are called to give. That's what it means to love one another. It means to love like Jesus. It means to live a life led by extravagant love, extravagant love to each other. In doing so, we can build others up. We can encourage others to grow in their faith. Today, we celebrate the impact that people have on each of our lives and the impact that they continue to have even years later. As a child, there were and are people who lead us on the path of spiritual maturity. As teenagers and young adults, there were and are people who guide us on our spiritual walk. As adults, there were and continue to be people who continue to lead us, guide us, and support us on our spiritual journey. I imagine that for each of you here, there are people in this very room, people in your family, in your church growing up, who have impacted you and your relationship with God. There are people that maybe you haven't thought about in a while. People who helped you get to this point in your spiritual journey. So let us take time to celebrate. To celebrate these people, both past and present. 
This week, I invite you to think about and celebrate these people in your life. In addition to what you write on your heart card, I encourage you, encourage you to take it one step further. Reach out to this person or to these people. Send them an email. Give them a call. Write them a letter and put it in the mail. Tell them what a difference they made in your life. It's amazing what a difference you can make in their lives by sharing how they impacted you and your walk with Christ. This church is a church that is full of life changers, full of people who have walked alongside each other, full of people who are making a difference in the lives of others. This church truly is a special place. So thank you to each of you for your commitment to the life of this church, past, present, and future. Your extravagant generosity in time, talent, and resources has helped this church to do amazing things. And I can't wait to see what is yet to come in the life of this church. God is love. God calls us to also be loved to each other, to our community, and to the world. So I invite you to do that, to remember who showed that love to you and share it with others.